Today, the president made it clear that yesterday's so-called attempted walk back, thin as it was, grudging as it was, was quite simply a crock. As meaningless as you may have guessed it to be at the time. And frankly, is anyone really surprised? I mean, seriously. This president says anything he thinks will get him out of a jam in the moment, even if he doesn't believe it, even if it contradicts what he's previously said. The very idea that he didn't like his supporters chanting, send her back, it is ludicrous. He is the one who started this entire shameful ploy. At this point, his lying is so obvious, it's almost insulting because it assumes that everyone listening is either dumb or looking for any excuse to ignore the president every time he says something racist or bigoted or inappropriate. So this was his expression of alleged regret yesterday. Listen. Mr. President, if I may, when your supporters last night were chanting, chanting, send her back, why didn't you stop them? Why didn't you ask them to stop saying that? Well, number one, I, I think I did. I started speaking very quickly. It, it really was a loud, I disagree with it, by the way, but it was quite a chant. And uh, I felt a little bit badly about it. But I will say this, uh, I did, and I started speaking very quickly. But it started up rather, rather fast, as you probably noticed. Now, all right, before we go any further, it should be mentioned that by Wednesday night, the president had already, four days, been tweeting and saying that these four congresswomen should go back uh, where they came from, never mind that three were born in this country, and the fourth, Congresswoman Ilan Omar, is a, an American citizen, a naturalized American. She's a refugee from Somalia. Now, as for saying, quote, I think I did, which is ask the crowd to stop chanting, or that, quote, I started speaking very quickly, the guy's just lying. It, it, I mean, he's just lying. And if you don't believe that, it's all on tape. So let's just look at it. Omar has a history of launching vicious anti-Semitic screeds. Okay. I mean, you saw that, right? Uh, you know what that is. That's, that's taking it all in. That's letting it build. That's savoring it. It's encouraging it. Now, he stood there for 13 full seconds listening to the crowd chant back the very notion that he himself had been pushing for days leading up to the moment. He didn't ask them to stop. He didn't rush to move on. He didn't say it's not appropriate and here's why. He didn't stand up to the worst elements of human nature. He stood there soaking in this Greek chorus of racism, and he later returned to the very same subject, launching even more attacks on the Congresswomen that night. And now, I mean, it continues with his daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, who's on TV this morning, lying in a way that even contradicts what the president lied about yesterday. Listen to this. The crowd themselves started chanting this, and it wasn't the whole crowd. It was a couple of people right, right there in the front. But uh, he didn't say it. A couple people. He didn't say it. I mean, I wouldn't even normally bring in the daughter-in-law of the president, but she's putting herself out there. She has a role in the campaign, and she's just friggin' lying. I mean, keep in mind, the president just yesterday said it was a real loud chant. Quite a chant, he went on to say. Not just a couple people. And he didn't have to say, send her back. He's already said it in tweets, and the crowd was already primed to chant it by guess who? That's right, Lara Trump. If you don't love our country, the president said it. You can leave. Right? Am I right? Huh? You can leave. What is it they say? The family that hates together in... In any event, factual falsehoods aside, a moment ago, you heard the president say he, quote, felt a little bit badly, unquote, about the chanting. You heard him say he, quote, disagreed with it. Now, which might lead you to think his next move would be the usual one after a politician blows the racial dog whistle, or in this case, a train whistle. As cynical as it is to contemplate, you might think the president would say to himself, you know what, mission accomplished. I served my purpose, move on. I tossed out some red meat uh, to the base. Tossed out some racism to the, the, you know, the racists. And the president could pivot, as they say in Washington. Now, of course, you might also believe that the president somehow saw the errors of his ways and honestly regrets bringing the country to such an ugly and dangerous place. You might think that having stared into the kind of abyss that leads to a 
Civil War, the standard bearer of the party of Lincoln, might, as President Lincoln once said, speak to the better angels of our nature. But who are we kidding? Here's what the president said today at an event ostensibly honoring the surviving Apollo 11 astronauts. President Trump, you, you were unhappy with the chant. Um, however, the chant was just repeated. No, you know what I'm, said, what I'm unhappy what you with? Said in your tweet. You know what I'm unhappy with? You know what I'm unhappy with? I'm unhappy with the fact that a congresswoman can hate our country. I'm unhappy with the fact that a congresswoman can say anti Semitic things. I'm unhappy with the fact that a congresswoman, in this case, a different congresswoman, can call our country and our people garbage. That's what I'm unhappy so with. Unhappy Those with people in North Carolina, that stadium was packed. It was a record crowd. And I could have filled it 10 times, as you know. Those are incredible people. Those are incredible patriots. OK, so that whole thing he said yesterday, just throw that one out. A whole day of people claiming that he has regrets and renounces the chant. There was, that was what was on TV all day yesterday. And all his surrogates, they went out there singing that tune last night. You heard the president. He's, he's, uh, he's repudiated the, that chant. Now he went back to embracing the chanters as incredible patriots. Listen, listen as well to what he said just a short time later on his way to one of his golf clubs for the weekend, the one, among others, that routinely hired undocumented immigrants to save money on wages. No, you know what's racist to me? When somebody goes out and says the horrible things about our country, the people of our country, that are anti-Semitic, that hate everybody, that speak with scorn and hate, that, to me, is really a very dangerous thing. I think these four congressmen, and I could say some worse than others, but if you look at the statements they've made, what they call the people of our country and our country garbage, when they hit Israel the way they've hit Israel, so hard, so horrible, I think to me, that's a disgrace. And we should never forget it. We're dealing with people that hate our country. So again, he's talking about four elected representatives. That's who he's talking about, four American citizens, four women of color, four human beings who in his eyes, and I guess the eyes of at least the people chanting, are the enemy, not the opposition, the enemy.